the way you feel and the way you are living now, if you compare it to when you grew up in Angary. Mm. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but in Gary, yes. In Gary. Um, is it similar? In no. No? Los Angeles is not. No, I mean Gary. I mean the way you are writing oh, now, the way emotionally. Yes. Yeah, I came full circle. Um, you know, I grew up my dad's a kind of a activist and a poet and a a creator and he loves working with the land and my mom's a yoga teacher and a body worker and an amazing kind of wise woman and uh, I think I moved away from this idea for a little while of, of living in the world and then naturally came back to to the center of myself to come back to who I am and it's not always easy to come back to that place you know uh, why not because we get caught up you know we're humans we 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 get, the ego gets involved, a big one for me, or most people on stage is like, for example, in touring, I really see touring and playing shows as a giving experience. It's the only way it can work for me now. I don't walk on stage hoping to receive something from people or that I'm there for myself and those people, you know, you know, fuck them because I can turn up whenever I want and I can do what they want. They're just fans. I don't even use the word fans because they come, they're community, you know? We're creating it together. So for me, removing the ego is important. And f you, you have to have practices for that. You know, for me, it's surfing and it's spending time in nature and it's yoga and meditation. And otherwise, you go crazy, man. I mean, you know, you're on stage every night, you know, people, oh, you want some alcohol? Hey, you want this? Hey, man, you want this? Oh, look at these beautiful people. And, and it's easy to get caught up, of course. So, Naturally, we have to find our balance and, and stay there because otherwise I'm not doing my job anymore. Oh, it could be that the way you grew up, grow up as a child, yeah. that's something that's, that's really defining. Of course. And, and, yeah. and it's, then you grow up and you go to bigger cities and you meet, yeah. other, and you meet other people. And it's somehow, especially when you're doing something that you're creating. So yeah, you have to take yourself with you and yeah. you have to retain that. And, I realize I see the world differently from a lot of people uh, because of how I grew up. And I, I also acknowledge that environment and landscape and the, the, the energy of the place that you are has a very different influence on who you are. Um, so li me living in Berlin is a slightly different version of me when I'm living in Berlin to when I'm living in Los Angeles to when I'm living in an island in the, you know, Indonesia. If your mom and dad listen to your music, what do they say? Uh, they're really proud of it. They're, they're really proud. My mom always tells me to put more messages of goodness for the world. She's always on me about that. Um, but they really, they're really proud and they really, um, both of them are artists in what they do in their life. So they, they can also connect with the, the idea of what I'm doing as well. They understand it. It's not just like, oh, that's pretty. They understand, uh, and I think the feedback they get from other people in the, in the communities helps them understand it even more, what it's doing for people or if it's changing or helping someone, catalyzing someone to have an experience or change their life or you know, connect to it through a hard time. The, my parents, I think when they hear about that stuff, really uh, love that. And in a way, both of my parents do work for other people. You know, My mom as a yoga teacher and a... Uh, you know, homeopath, naturopath, midwife. And my dad is a, somebody that's been an activist and a sustainable planner. And I, I think, in a way, this is my role of how I get to give back to people. So it's nice to continue that lineage in a different way. The album is called Dawn. Mm. When, during the recording of the album, did you decide to put this album title on the album? I had a lot of different album titles. A lot of them were very long. Because how do you describe the whole journey? And the irony is almost every song on the record has a very short yeah. title. Um, and I realized I was driving, I was living in the mountains. I moved up kind of in the north of Los Angeles, away from the city into a big log house in the mountains, looking down over the sea to write the album. And uh, I would sit there and watch the change from night to day or day to night, sometimes when I was writing. And I realized 
uh, when I was driving down the hill in this old, I have this old Cadillac, you know, with the roof and it doesn't work, it's convertible. And I was driving through the mist and I could barely see anything and the windscreen wipers didn't work, you know, and, the, and then I just saw the sun rise and it was the most beautiful thing and I just realized that that was the energy that, that I wanted the album to have and in a way it's the time of day that we see the least as people. We don't, we don't watch the sunrise very much. We don't, we don't have that. And in, all, in almost all spiritual practices, dawn is a very sacred time. Yeah. And so I just really wanted to imbue the record with this sense of sacredness. And I think you can listen to the record if you stayed up all night and partied even, and then you put the record and it, it makes sense. Or if you went to bed early and you wake up and you put it on at dawn, it makes sense. And so for me, it was about uh, that. And then about this idea of kind of it's my first solo album as Ray X, so it's the beginning of something. You know, I've, I've been doing the Acid and Howling and other projects and the EP, but this was the beginning of sharing more work. Last question. You wrote the album mm. in a uh, uphill in Los Angeles, looking out over the sea. Mm. Why didn't you write the album in your in the in the town where you grew up? It's a good question. Um, Los An I've had an interesting relationship with Los Angeles for like 12 years now, uh, longer, maybe 14 years. I went there as a teenager, you know, by accident. I got asked to go there and I didn't like it at first, but we built a relationship and it seems to be a place that I create from. I share my music in Europe more, uh, I tour here more, uh, but for some reason there's an amazing creativity and a freedom to the to Los Angeles and the people in Los Angeles have an amazing network of people that I can call to create with. Um, so this idea of solitude, and I was like two hours north of the city when I went, made the record. Um, I think also it helps me to be away from uh, being defined. You know, when you grow up in a place, there's a lot of mirrors around you of who you were supposed to be or who you were when you were 14. And that's how everybody remembers you, because you left at 16, 17 years old, um, which is when I left home. And, and for me, I think it was important to have space and solitude so I could be completely honest with whoever I was at that moment. And that's what I'm still trying to do is like find those places where I'm honest to myself, not to the people around me, but to myself. Nice ending. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Good interview. Yes. It's rare to have Thank good you. interviews. Thank you.